Yar, matey, welcome to... No, can't do it. The Dread Pirate Steve be in no man's debt. I'll make a barter with you, true our star. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Myths, the series that finds the biggest myths that people actually believe and dispels them one by one. For this installment, we'll be tackling five myths about pirates that had us walking the plank of lies. I mean, you hear pirate ship, you think sails, cannonballs. Oh, not one of these guys has a beard. Are you done? Hang on. Planks. Now I'm done. For the record, we won't be discussing modern day pirates, such as those found off the coast of Somalia. I didn't know pirates were still a real thing. Or your cousin Ralph, who's been downloading the latest HBO drama. Oh, and before we go any further, that pirate voice we started with earlier? Yes, that's a myth perpetuated by that scoundrel Robert Louis Stevenson in his classic Treasure Island. So stop celebrating National Talk Like a Pirate Day. No fun allowed. Gar, lady, where are you headed? Peter. You are not a pirate. Myth number five, pirates were outlaws. I also come bearing gifts for your majesty. These gifts, majesty, are the fruits of piracy. When you hear the word pirate, you're probably thinking of an old salty scallywag on the run from justice and enjoying a lawless life on the high seas. And you're wrong. How nice to see a fellow pirate make good of himself. Pirate, nay, privateer. A career in piracy was actually a semi-legitimate one, at least if you take into account that some pirates started out their lives as privateers, men legally employed by their governments to attack and rob enemy ships, which is somewhat more admirable. Philip of Spain is no friend of England, Majesty. The more gold I take from him, the safer you will be. Well, well. A political pirate. Some of those government bodies, such as the British Navy, would often forcibly recruit just about any able-bodied man for their ships, which meant that many crews consisted of bloodthirsty thugs who were shackled to their ships at all times. So with life as a sailor being such a rough one, many would understandably be delighted when given the prospect of literally jumping ship to a pirate vessel. <laughs> Myth number four, there were no female pirates. Bad luck to have a woman on board too. There's a number of infamous pirate captains who have seen their names immortalized in the history books. From Blackbeard to Henry Morgan, these blokes' legacies are known by all. As such, one pervasive myth is that all these feared pirates were men. This is actually not the case at all, as there are plenty of recorded female pirates, some of which even disguised as men. Exceptions to this pirate boys club included Anne Bonny and Mary Mark Reed two notable women who were actually caught and tried for piracy. The lady who had perhaps the most impressive pirating career was China's Qing Shi, also known as Madame Xing, an immensely powerful and successful pirate queen who was actually able to avoid the hangman's noose and retire with her life and loot intact. Shipwreck Cove is a fortress, a well-supplied fortress. There is no need to fight if they cannot get to us. Myth number three, pirates wear eye patches because they're missing an eye. Lily? How long have you been sitting there? Stupid eye patch. Bloody Hollywood movies with their false depictions of pirate culture, always leading you to believe that under that patch is a nasty battle wound. Shark attack, Swap. A shark ate your eye? Yeah, it happened when I went down off the coast of Australia. No, unlike Metal Gear's big boss, these grizzled war vets didn't have their eyes blown out in a scuffle. The truth behind the eye patch is actually based more on practicality. The main purpose of wearing one is to make it easier for invading pirates' eyes to adjust to low light and darkness when raiding enemy ships. Specifically, the crew would wear their patches while moving about on the deck, and then switch the patch to their other eye when night fell and the time came to board an enemy ship under the cover of darkness. Indeed, the pirates could remove their eye patches at any time. Unless, of course, they really were missing an eye. We don't like to generalize on this show. But if you want to stay ahead of me, Mr. Secretary, you need to keep both eyes open. Myth number two, all pirates flew the skull and crossbones flag. These days, many of us tend to associate the Jolly Roger as a flag representing anything and everything pirate. But in reality, pirate ships flew many different flags, which could stand for anything from their current status or their captain's coat of arms. They were actually a creative old bunch. For example, a pirate ship could fly a solid black sail representing the recent death of a crew member, which also meant that they were willing to negotiate with a fellow vessel in their sorry state. You've seen a ship with black sails that's crewed by the damned and captained by a man so evil that hell itself spat him back out. No. 
No. But I have seen a ship with black sails. Oh. A flag that was completely red, however, was usually flown for intimidation, meaning that opponents were in for a really bad time should they be boarded by a bloodthirsty band of pirates. <laughs> Myth number one, pirates made maps leading to their buried treasure. There are countless films and novels detailing the search for buried pirate treasure, but the reality of the situation was that most pirates spent their fortunes as quickly as they earned them, for theirs was a dangerous occupation. These were raiders who lived at sea, and any gold or silver which was acquired during their raid was usually spent almost immediately on women or alcohol at the notorious Jamaican harbour village of Port Royal, which, by the way, was the chillest pirate hub during the Golden Age. Welcome to Port Royal, Mr. Smith. The truth behind burying pirate treasure is that it was usually only done if there was too much to carry, they were being followed by enemies, or otherwise had to dump it quick before coming back to reclaim it shortly thereafter. Privateers and pirates such as Sir Francis Drake and William Kidd were known to have gone this route, but honestly, pirates certainly weren't about to mark down the location of any treasure for others to find. So you might want to give up on all those adventurous dreams. Oh, wow. Finished counting all your gold doubloons? Couldn't resist, mate. This is what Google searches are asking about pirates. Why do pirates have hooks? Were there pirates in the Caribbean? Did pirates ever smoke weed? For more swashbuckling top 10s and treasure hunting top 5s, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. On deck, you scabrous dogs! Hands for braces! Let go and hold to run free! Now, bring me that horizon.